Welcome back to Profiles in Caring as we continue our story in Costa Rica and the study of the capuchin monkey. Now this research is very valuable, but so too are the researchers' opinions about the issues of poaching and monkeys as pets. Doug Jardine concludes our story. We love the monkeys um, probably more than anybody else uh, and we would love to hug them but we never do, right? We would never ever take a monkey home. Um, and the reason for that is that monkeys are social animals, like humans, and they need their social group. In their groups, they have families, they have relationships, they have friendships, enemies, they have long histories. And to take a monkey out of that, even if it's an infant, is really depriving it of something. The more you respect an animal, the more I think you come to believe that it needs to live the life that it has evolved to live. And the, the pressure of poachers have grown quite large in the last couple of years. Two days ago we had two people with rifle walking down the river and they shot their rifle just past 10 minutes after they passed us and that's not cool. Um, it's just like, there's like, apart from losing monkeys that you kind of grow attached to, that you really like, and which are part of your study and are really important to you. Um, it's, it's just dangerous of having somebody just shooting a rifle. They're mainly uh, after other things, but then monkeys um, sometimes serve for target practice. One female capuchin being killed in 2002 by a poacher, and we actually ran into the poacher, and he was like, yeah, it was me. And I'm like, but why? And then his little, uh, her little son, uh, was orphanated. It was um, the case of Nobu that we all very, grew very, very attached to. This little, this little monkey of like eight months or so, he was old, and got adopted by his grandmother. And we were like, yeah, he can make it. And he did it for another two years. And then in 2004, he, we found him, or we found his body, and he had a cracked skull. So we expect that we think that somebody threw a rock at him. My original inspiration uh, for this was witnessing uh, a female who had lost her baby the day before um, passing back by the place that we had last seen the baby and just going into this incredible you know, emotional state where she was making a vocalization we call lost call, which they used to contact each other at a distance, uh, making these alarm calls, kind of cooing, you know, sadly, just this whole array of vocalizations and running around all of this area that we had last seen the baby and was clearly very, very disturbed. Uh, and she went back to the group and uh, another female met her just outside the group and they immediately began grooming and engaging in this, this very kind of intimate contact that made me think very much of you know, human relationships and you know, what would happen if you know, a female had lost her, her child and how she would be supported by her friends. As if surviving in a dry forest would not be challenge enough, these capuchin monkeys continually deal also with man-induced threats. Of course, poaching of these monkeys is illegal here, but it still happens. And of course, the taking of monkeys for sale as pets on the black market is illegal, but that also still happens here. These researchers are not politicians. They don't make and can't make laws, but they have found that instances of both poaching and taking of monkeys for pets are drastically reduced when their presence at Loma Barbulal is felt. And then it is what they believe is their obligation to take their research along with general conservation messages to everyone and anyone who will listen, especially the children. Our efforts to um, really kind of educate the community, which is something we would just really want to step up how much we involve the community and how much we're really talking to them about what we're doing here and you know what the forest, why the forest can be useful to them, you know, more than just for target practice. Instead of throwing rocks at monkeys, we need you to throw money at monkeys. <laughs> well, I think we get to know another species and to appreciate maybe that humans not, shouldn't be quite so human-centric and that there are other animals on the earth that deserve a place to be here um, in all the ways that we do. Uh, a lot of things that people like to attribute to humans as being the reason why they're unique the reason why they somehow deserve the land they live on or the resources they take more than other animals. The more you study animals, you see that that's just not true. Um, there are definitely huge differences between humans and all the other animals. We are special. 
but we're not special in a way that means that we can take land from other species and not leave them a place. Up to this point, we still have not seen the complete lifespan of a capuchin. The oldest one that we actually know the birth is now about 18 years old. And then we have older animals than that, but we are not quite sure when they were born because they were already here when we started. So that will be really interesting to see like the complete lifespan. Uh, long term as well, which are hopefully going to start this year is to set up an environmental education program, a conservation program to include the, um, the communities a little bit more, to do environmental education, to, to teach them about the nature, like the forest, the monkeys, so that people will not, and people understand the, the, the um, environment a little bit better, so they will not go out and just throw rocks at monkeys just because it's fun. You think they understand you slash No, here? no, no, I don't think they understand at all. I think no. they're very confused. Well, they mostly ignore us, but I think when they do contemplate what it is we're doing, they think we're just some really silly, really lost, uh, hairless monkeys. But they just stare entranced and they're like, are you my friend? What are you? You look funny. And as they grow older, they get curious about us as juveniles. They're in that kind of playful, explorative stage. But by the time they're having their own babies or, you know, going and immigrating off to another groups, they've pretty much decided that we are, you know, just objects in the forest like trees or other animals, I think. There you have it. The future looks kind of bright here. The researchers are very optimistic. They need money to make this research continue. We hope you will appease them. You can learn more by logging onto our website, profilesincaring.com, and we'll also post this video on goodtube.org. From Costa Rica, I'm Doug Jardine, Profiles in Caring. Thanks for watching, and thanks for caring.